Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about the replacement of H. sapiens neanderthalensis by H. sapiens sapiens in Eurasia. Now, I have a, an article by the Washington Post and uh, I'm going to also debunk it as I talk about the actual study that was made, which I have linked in the description. I've also included in the description, in my description, so you guys should check them out. Um, uh, other slightly less problematic articles that are, that are just a little bit better written than this one, than, than Washington Post. Why do I do this? Because I don't only just present uh, science as I, as, as its purest form i also like to show you how a badly written science journalism in then is uh, performed in the mainstream media so i have so i have uh, included an, uh, the article from the washington post because it is just so well written, and I'm and I'm saying that in the most sarcastic sarcastic voice I can can try. So we will uh, begin uh, by sharing the article. Um, the article basically is about that uh, humans, uh, he in this case, or in factual, uh, modern humans or sapiens, hate sapiens sapiens, replaced hate sapiens Neanderthal. Lenses. Uh, proceeding. Nope, wrong one. Uh, it's this one. There we go. Okay. Uh, the title is well. It is exactly the same as uh, well. It should be. We outlasted them. So the one of the hypotheses that have been uh, put forward uh, recent, very recently. Um, to 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 describe why how we replaced uh, Neanderthals, um, we have no evidence for um, any conflict between sapiens and Neanderthalensis. We have no um, evidence for um, well, conflict can be a lot of things. Replace. Uh, um, it, it, it's a lot of things. Um, we do have evidence that they mated. They mated. And the evidence we have is we carry most Euro, 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 Eurasians and uh, continuously contain DNA from Neanderthals in our, in our, uh, in our genome. So... Uh, we will get to the study. Uh, it starts off really nicely. Uh, by the standards of the Paleolithic age, by their standards, they, they already set a, a presupposition. Uh, pre, pre Members of H. Neanderthalensis, they forgot the sapiens, this uh, uh, article, and it is written by, just so you guys know, by Sarah Kaplan. We'll get to there. Uh, we're at the height of sophistication. Yes, the ancient hominins, she got that right, ranged across Europe and parts of Asia for more than 300,000 years. Correctly, they produced tools, jewelry, impressive cave creations. They cared for their sick and elderly and perhaps even formed a primitive kind of dentist, dentist, dentistry. Uh, they also buried their dead. They also created mobile uh well not mobile art but at least art in caves that's where the cave creation bit comes from you can click on those links uh the uh, this uh, journalist will take you to other articles but uh you can also see my videos which i talk about uh, neanderthals uh religion um, uh tools their jewelry which he read and uh, their um their uh, art and also their burial practices. There I have them in there. Just have a look at my videos. Now, uh, but then H. Sapiens, Sapiens, but the second Sapiens showed up 
and the Neanderthals disappeared. Well, they didn't just disappear instantly. It took a little bit longer than we know. And I will probably be talking about this this week. So uh, I, have to, I have to answer the phone. I'll just, I apologize, people. Uh, be right back. Uh, God, sorry about that. I deeply apologize for this little interlude. Uh, let's get back to the the article itself. Uh, when when uh, Neanderthal when H sapiens uh, shut up, Neanderthals didn't just disappear like that. It we now have, we now have evidence that uh, H sapiens arrived in Eurasia about 194,000 years ago. So from 194,000 years ago to about 38,000 years ago, when the last Neanderthal flickered out in in the Iberian Peninsula, we have a hell of a lot of time be, while they interacted. So just I will talk about that other, uh, what I just said, the, the, the oldest H. sapiens sapiens um, discovery outside of Africa in a, in a not so far uh, program. So yeah. So for decades, human, uh, modern human scientists, archaeologists and anthropologists, that's what she means. Seriously, this is why certain um, mainstream media papers should not touch science if they don't have an uh, have a, a a competent person that knows what she what that person's talking about, because modern human scientists. Why don't you just say scientists today? Us now. There must have been something wrong with the Neanderthals. No, we just didn't know. We didn't know why, how they, why they disappeared. We don't. We still don't know why they disappeared or how they disappeared. And this is just an just this is just a hypothesis, uh, or something right with us. Yeah, right. Now that's uh, the species. Now, uh, which led that led to their extinction. Maybe H. Maybe Neanderthalenses Neanderthals had bad genes that made the species more vulnerable to disease. Actually, no, there's no evidence of that at, at, at all. In fact, um, uh, there were a couple of uh, uh, events where our species, be they archaic, H. sapiens, um, uh, went into Eurasia, uh, Europe, in fact, and uh, uh, from about 200,000 years or even slightly earlier and actually mated with, ne with Neanderthals. I've mentioned, I've talked about that in the past videos. Check them out. And um, they deposit, they uh, led, that led to uh, certain gene strains being preserved in the Neanderthal uh, DNA, which would later in more and more or less in our last uh, out of Africa movement. Um, and then when we began also again to mate with the Anathos, we re regained those lost uh, 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 genes. It is, I've already talked about that, and I'll possibly do another video on that uh, subject soon. So um, they were not prone to diseases as much as we are prone to diseases now. Basically the same. Or maybe the climate changed quickly and they couldn't adapt. Well, knowing that they lived in U Eurasia for at least 300,000 years, and within those 300,000 years we had one or two glacial maximums and one or two uh, interstadials where 
the, there were warmer periods between glaciation glacial periods um the last one we are still experiencing it now it started about 14,000 years ago this inst inst interstadial period of warming um <clears throat> So we know that that, that is not – that is a possibility. We, we don't know, but that is a possibility. I'm just saying that, yes, there could have been or, no, there couldn't and could ne not necessarily have been that they couldn't have ad adapted because they experienced warming periods before. So they that could be or not a possibility. Um, maybe modern humans were smarter, more uh, uh, innovative. Uh, the, the depends on what you define as smarter or in innovative. Yes, uh, H. sapiens were more innovative in their tool use and hunting techniques. We know that for a fact. We've tested it out. But smarter, how do you measure smarter? We don't know. So, um, so we don't know uh, about how uh, we can measure in smartness. Uh, were they better hunters? Then were they worse hunters than, than us? Not necessarily. They did survive for 300,000 years and they were basically uh, uh, capturing the same prey that they were when, when human, uh, when sapiens uh, uh, met them again. So uh, that is basically not, uh, could, be an, could be a possibility or not. Um, they were, uh, were better coming up with new ways of controlled territory and secure food. Uh, modern humans. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, there was no real need to control territory. That came more with uh, agriculture when you had actually had to control um, uh, a territory uh, because you were protecting your crop and or your uh, domesticated livestock. So that really doesn't bring into it. And we know that from modern hunter-gatherers, especially uh, from uh, Australasia and some areas of, uh, say, the Amazon, uh, 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 that the, that uh, controlling um, territory, you can, but you can. You also need to control, uh, uh, not control, but actually uh, um, allow for um, gene flow to occur. So you you don't want to just mate with the same small group of peoples. Uh, that could lead to a lot of uh, bad uh, genetic um, abnormalities. Um, so that is more or less the possible explanation. Um, acres of ancient archaeological sites have been excavated and libraries of academic journals fill, filled with scientific scientists seeking an explanation. Yes, they are. And... Uh, it has not been completely achieved yet. So let's say we don't know how why Neanderthals uh, went extinct. No, but um, this article, not this article, no, this article, I will show you guys the actual study, which is this one. It's public in nature, and it says a parsimonious neutral model suggests Neanderthal replacement was determined by migration and random species shift. That's the article which the Washington Post is trying to uh, decipher. So I found that they didn't at all, but uh, I'll leave that up to you guys. You can read them. They are, I've linked them in the description as I always do. I always link all my sources as rigorously as I can. So, like everyone is searching for uh, the just so story and why one species led to led the other to extinction they they're trying to make it a predeterministic model that yes our our, our uh, species had to uh, lead the another one to to extinction because we are the only ones left so uh, Oren Colodny tries the evolutionary biologist at, at Stanford University. But Colodny wondered what if there is a no just so explanation, which is quite good. In a paper, which is the one I just put, which, which is the one I just linked, showed you guys, and it's linked in the description, just published Tuesday. 
uh, published this week, last week, uh, in the Journal of Na Nature Communications. Klodny and his colleagues, Mark Feldman, test more basic hypothesis that extinction of Neanderthals was simply a consequence of population dynamics and bad timings. In most cases, it turned out that there was this was not enough to account for the disappearance of our hominin cousins, mostly, I can infer, obviously. So now we go into the story of uh, them explaining uh, how or where uh, Neanderthals basic history. They emerged around 400,000, but they got it wrong though. This article gets it totally wrong. Neanderthals first emerged in Europe around 400,000 years ago after evolving in Africa. No, they didn't. Neanderthals evolved in Europe. They evolved from a species which is called, the name is still in a little bit of a, uh, not completely settled. It is H. Uh, antecessor or ancestor human, uh, hominin. Or uh, which I think, and I'm more in me, this is my opinion, my inclination is uh, H. Heidelbergensis. Uh, which was a, a species of hominins that, that evolved from H. erectus and is the intermediate species between H. erectus and H. sapiens, and H. Uh, all of H. sapiens, being H. sapiens neanderthalensis, H. sapiens sapiens, and H. sapiens um, denisovans, which is another case. So that is uh, my, my, my own hypothesis. Of uh, H. Heidelbergensis is the direct ancestor of Neanderthals, human, modern humans, and Denisovans. The name, not the species. Uh, the species is generically called um, Antecessor uh, in many, many, uh, many journals. Uh, so it didn't evolve in Africa, it evolved in Europe. So anatomically, modern humans arrived in Europe. Now, after evolving in Africa, no, they didn't. Oh, I got this wrong. After evolving in Africa, uh, anatomical us, we did evolve in Africa, arrived in, in Europe. There was a brief period of time between 51,000 and 39,000 years ago. Yes, correctly. But we now now know that anatomically modern humans arrived in outside of Europe, at least in Israel. 194,000 years ago and um, and we know that they had contact with H. sapiens and H. neanderthalensis 200,000 years ago from genetic material from Spain of the Iberian Peninsula and a few other sites in uh, in Europe and in the Middle East most notably in Israel from the Mount Carm uh, Carmel caves and the oldest uh, so far has also been found in that, that cave. So I'll talk about it later. Um, uh, H. Uh, uh, H. Sapiens and the Lensers and H. Sapiens Sapiens shared, they did share the landscape. The last event of them sharing the la landscape was between 51,000 and 39,000 years ago, more or less. Uh, maybe fighting no no evidence at all about them fighting none zero absolutely none that is a, a total speculation but definitely interbreeding that is a factual statement and by the end of the era there was only one species left standing that is also a factual statement yes we were uh we have here a a picture of uh well i could play this video but i won't play it today um you guys can have a look at it and play it at your own leisure. Um, so the speed of replacement led scientists to assume that modern humans had some selective advantage. Could be. And there's no no evidence that it, there isn't. So I will accept this statement as 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 um, standalone as factual. A trait that made them and their offspring more evolutionarily successful than their cousins. See, they are assuming that they that Neanderthals. No, they are fa uh, actually stating that Neanderthals were our cousin species, and uh, they were a subspecies of Homo of H. sapiens. Initially, Kalodnia was interested in calculating the size of that advantage. That's a vague statement, but sure. 
To do so, he had to establish what's known as the null hypothesis. Uh, this is going to be a bit simplified as very, very simplified for readers of absolutely layman readers. So you see basically the null hypothesis, simple, simplest model that we can build uh, without assuming any hard to prove claims. Okay, uh, like selection and environmental change. True. Uh, in other words, what do I expect would have happened by default? If uh, you remove uh, uh, sapiens from the um, equation, would a Neanderthal still be alive today? That is basically what they are trying to do. Or if uh, sapiens were still in contact with them, would the environment be the be the, uh, the be the defining character, the defining um, element that led to their ex extinction or would it be the, um, the the natural selection so you got those three uh, parameters and they basically try to eliminate sapiens in this study so using uh, so what the researchers already know about the ancient hominid populations they knew about we, we know about the size population their migration patterns and how the environment works they used ecology but it's the environment uh, it was many a couple of uh this time when sapiens encountered 51,000 years encountered um neanderthals re-encountered i should say uh it was the beginning of a glacial maximum which lasted until uh, about the 13,000 years ago more or less 12 to 15,000 years ago, more or less. Uh, so that is the, the time frame that they were looking at. And they did a, a simple computer model that would s simulate Neanderth Neanderthal and Sapiens interactions in Paleolithic Europe. At the start of the simulation in Europe is inhabited by bands, quote, unquote, bands is a term that uh, describes a small group of uh, individuals uh, I would go more for the tribe because it describes it a little bit better. Because a band is just a loose conglomeration of individuals, where a tribe is more or less a, a comprised comprised of an extended family structure. Uh, it's in the social sciences, so you can have a look at that up. Uh, it's there. Um, but Neanderthals did not randomly move and and die out. They were, he was trying to start that. So that's another fallacy. There's no random movement in, in, um, in, uh, uh, in, in hunting. They were they had fixed patterns. Uh, hunter gatherers do not randomly move across the environment. They move in a in a pattern that maximizes their their the gains that they will capture and obtain uh, the most um, uh, food possible, be it plant or animal food. So, so that is uh, that is it's not random. Um, I'm trying to think of the word, but it's not coming, but never mind. Um, it'll come to me soon. But um, so yeah, um, neither one has an advantage from a natural selection perspective. Uh, of course it didn't. Yeah, from uh, we just got reading ahead. Um uh, the bands of modern humans migrated out around joined the, the European fry bands from each species had equal likelihoods of displacing the other. Not necessarily. They're assuming that they were displacing. They could have joined, joined up. They could have shared the the, the spaces they occupied. You can, possibility. If you have a vast area of Eurasia or even Europe with uh, a very few number of of humans, be they Neanderthal or Sapiens, you have a, a lot of space to to occupy and to hunt with without even encountering each other that is uh, the problem that is the the problem i have with this this uh this new uh, uh, washington post article uh read the 
the actual uh, um, study and it it shows something but not what they are trying to describe here um, Colony knew that one species had to go extinct at the end of each simulation uh, so he basically he knew that one had to go extinct uh, okay uh, that's I have no comment on that uh, it's basic principle of ecology. Two species can occupy the same niche at the same time. But we don't know if, you, if sapiens and Neanderthals occupy the same niche. They could have been complementary of each other. They could have been totally different from each other. We don't know. Uh, we, this is assuming a lot. Uh, uh, sometimes species will accommodate competition by developing some kind of spe uh, speciality, of course. For example, in parts of Israel where the two similar species of normally nocturnal uh, mice are found, one species adjusts to become active during the day. That is a really bad analogy. Uh, I won't even comment on that. It's a bad analogy. Mice, nocturnal mice. Uh, no, that's not right. They could have used the example of the of chimpanzees, for example, um, bonobo and uh, pa, uh, uh, pan bono, uh, bonobo and and, tr and troglodytes, the common chimp and the bonobo chimps, uh, they are they occupy more or less the same territory, yet they don't compete with each other. So they could have gotten to, gotten that uh, analogy better than getting something from a totally different species. Um, but homonyms are generalists, not specialists. That can be both. It can be both, uh, which which can be seen later on in uh, in the Neolithic and just prior to the Neolithic, at the beginning, just before the Neolithic, where the due to the the ending of the last glacial maximum and the the um, extinction of the megafauna, uh, humans had to become specialist uh, hunters, and they concentrated a lot on horses. Uh, um, undulates and a smaller game so they did not necessarily become they became specialists instead of generalists uh, again um, at the time of the Neanderthal extinction archaeological evidence suggests uh, their abilities and behavior were pretty similar to ours they contradict the statement that they just said before they are uh, sorry about that that uh, that um uh that um ad uh, passed on a script as I could. <clears throat> so Kolodny and Feldman ran these simulations hundreds and thousands of times and uh, changing the values um per number of different variables to reflect the uncertainty that scientists have about this period of human history. But in the vast majority of cases, under the wide range of parameters, the simulations ended with Neanderthals dying, uh, dying out within 12,000 years. Um, I only have uh, problems with the. I don't know what the very well the article in the the actual studies shows the articles the the variables that they used of obviously. Um, <clears throat> But it's still only statistical models. The outcome of these statistical models that these two uh, scientists um, uh, ran are still just statistical models. Uh, they, there could be other variables that we still don't know about. We are still just uh, learning a, a lot. Uh, in fact, these last three years have been what I would deem and the and, and other golden age of archaeological discovery. I am absolutely thrilled and I get giddy whenever I see a notification of some new of some new discovery. Because it is a new discovery. So the the I this study is valid. And yes, they more or less are correct that Neanderthals could have died out within 12,000 years. Um, but it still doesn't explain a lot. Maybe they were 
uh, just absorbed into the sapiens um uh cult of sapiens uh hate sapiens absorbed in to them and uh later um natural selection bred out the the more neanderthal characteristics naturally because uh, sexual selection works that way it's a preferences and each area has certain preferences which leads to certain characteristics well that's another story which i won't go into now <clears throat> uh, it doesn't necessarily prove that humans didn't have a selective advantage or that climate change didn't influence uh, neanderthal's fates colony cautions completely yes perfectly yes yes he he of course it is absolutely correct but even if there is no selection or no climate change the end result would have been the same it's a subtle distinction but it's important um some uh, teeth they did use toothpicks 130,000 years ago if you guys want to know um and um No, I continue. Um, the University of Leiden Neanderthals told the Associated Press that this study fits with other research that aims to understand Neanderthals' demise without suggesting suggesting humans had a level uh, evolutionary leg up on its cousins. Um, basically, what the uh, uh, the University of Leiden Neanderthals will rub rubric rubrics. I'm sure Modwain would pronounce that better than I am. Uh, he's in the chat because I'm I, I'm not ignoring you guys. I'm concentrating more on the study here and I'll talk to you guys after I finish this article. So, uh, yes. Um, it's common to think that evolution is a series of battles between species. Uh, I don't see it that way. Uh, the many common people and so, yeah, uh, it's bad publicity that this occurs. Um, how you how can you not with terms like survival of the fittest and evolutionary evolutionary arms race yes there, there that's good sprinkled throughout biological textbooks I can, can I can I can um um can uh, attest to that that I I did when I was doing it from from year eight to uh, to uh, end of my archaeological uh, degree the textbooks did have those survival of the fittest and evolution of the arms race etc etc um but, but nature creatures aren't making strategic decisions to win an evolutionary war bingo perfectly yes evolution does not lead to anywhere evolution just happens it is random and only the fittest do survive or are bred out or it's bred in or etc the weakest are bred out normally even today it's happening with us don't get me wrong we are still evolving so, um they are just trying to ensure their own existence yes mm, it can be seen in uh, richard dawkins the uh, selfish gene if you guys want to check that out uh, the fate of individuals and our species are determined by chance correctly gradual acc accumulations of flukes of genetics a quirk of timing uh, the lucky draw of a evolutionary card. Uh, there's no lucky draw, it just happens. Uh, in the case of our species, modern humans happen to have the deck stacked in their favor. No, they didn't. There's no stacking in their favor. We were close to around 70,000 years ago, we were close to being wiped out by a, a genetic bottleneck that happened because of the eruptions of Mount Toba in the in the um, Indonesian archipelago that uh, almost wiped out uh, Homo sapiens sapiens. So uh, we were not stacked against our favor. There were, a min there were a huge variety of factors which led us to dominate the planet today. And we still don't know why or how it happened. So the Kolodny, to, to a football fan, no, I'm going to, after watching his favorite team win the Super Bowl, no. Finding out that the game had been rigged and from the offset, no. It doesn't matter. 
mean that her team didn't the team didn't play well. No, uh, it doesn't work that way. Uh, basically, I'll I'll tell you what the actual study shows from other. Uh, I've, I'll link a couple more articles in the uh, in the description. It basically says that even without uh, sapiens appearing in Europe, Neanderthals were already declining and were doomed to disappear all by themselves. Uh, just by that, uh, they had they had necessarily come to a, a genetic blind a dead 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 end. Um, we don't know why, but uh, it, we we have seen studies uh, that there was a decline in their numbers and etc. Uh, that is how I will end this article. Uh, now, so and the concluding uh, Neanderthals were already on the way out. As be before them, other species have had gone before. So, guys, um, we're now going to address we're gonna address the uh, for a little bit the uh, chat. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming on. Uh, some new people here. Uh, all I can see is a lot of spanners. Uh, some of the non-spanners have have uh, maybe have said, "Oh, he's not talking about what I wanted to hear." So. I don't want to see. Uh, well, at least no downvotes. That's that's fine. <laughs> but I don't really care. They just uh, so I'm going to ask. Uh, okay, Tim Smith. We all have the same genes. It's a matter of environmental and hereditary activations and genes that cause uh, this difference. Yes, Tim Smith, you are absolutely correct. Uh, yes, that's it. Um, we have um, adaptations. It's called hereditary. Hereditary. Uh, we um, are as each person, each group of people are as they are because they basically uh, adapted to that environment that they had. But it still does not change the fact that we belong to one subspecies of humans. And uh, our, our, ge our genome allows for all those changes. It's already in our genome. Uh, if you want the darker skin, the genes are there. If you want a lighter skin, the genes are there. Blue eyes, the same. Blue eyes are uh, regressive. So if you mix a, a brown eyed with a green eyed, a blue eyed, you may get green, or you will most definitely get more brown eyed than blue eyes, for example. So that's just as it occurs. Uh, John, uh, see, I wait the day. Gets through an entire stream without. So, no, I can't say that word, man. Uh, I just. Oh no! I, I I almost said him. I almost said it a couple of times. You are right. You are right. Uh, Batman, how are you, my friend? Cheers, man. Um. That uh, I prefer the hypothesis that they didn't specifically die out, but were absorbed. Yes, yes, me too. I just said that, man. You you almost read my mind. I didn't see your tweet because I don't. I don't really look at the the, the chat. Um. Davy, do you think that it was environmental pressures? Uh, possibly, yes. The environmental pressures, especially the last glaciation period, where where the, a lot of the megafauna were already dying out, and um, possibly, no, there is all the possibilities are there. Uh, we don't know. That's the good thing about it. We are learning, and we will get there. But at this point in time, we don't know, Davy. Uh, the Neanderthals, yes, Batman. The Neanderthals did follow the herd. So did Sam, Sa uh, Sapiens. So did um, uh, Denis Oven. So did before them uh, Heidelbergensis. Uh, so did uh, Erectus. So did all uh, hominins after Erectus, because Erectus was the really active, the first of the of our lineage that were active hunters. Uh, yes, yes, yes. They did follow the herds. So it wasn't random. Um, what else? Yes, aliens. No, no, aliens did not. Come on. <laughs> okay, guys. The start. Um, what uh, do you see? Okay. Um, I think that's about it. I'm going to end it now. Thank you guys for participating and for being on the stream. Um, 
Oh, the, yeah. The, do you guys know, just to this out of uh, the interest, uh, the Chinese have managed to, uh, uh, I don't know if it's correct or not. I, it's just, it came out in a news article. Uh, I'll, I'll have to wait for the scientific paper to come out. Then it's been peer reviewed and et cetera. Uh, but the Chinese have managed to clone a couple of monkeys. Uh, they was on the news. Uh, I don't know the species of them, but, uh, if, but, um, yeah, they were, yeah, they were, uh, no, no, uh, uh, they were on the news. No, uh, Batman, Neanderthals were not exclusively carnivorous. In fact, we have uh, 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 some evidence from Spain, especially the northern Spain, where they've uh, managed to extract the plaque of Neanderthals, and they found there that the plaque, the, uh, the uh, chemical um, elements, that they that the ones that they extracted from a certain individuals were primarily vegetarians from fungi like mushrooms to honey etc so you know almost uh, yes i know you did say almost but but no they weren't not most almost exclusively carnivorous you can also say the same with sapiens that they could have been mostly carnivorous but there is a balance we have evidence that they had a balanced diet of both plants and animals and when i say plants i don't mean pears bananas and that i mean actual the plants that were available in ice age europe lichens mushrooms berries some fruits some legumes some roots etc so yes Uh, some, some, uh, no, no, mate. There is some evidence that some groups, uh, depending on the poop and the, the samples that they got, and uh, I don't know if it was seasonal or not, but there are, there is evidence that from that that Spanish sample, purely uh, uh, vegetarian. In fact, they found hardly any um, evidence that that individual. I must say, I must stress that individual that they. That extracted the plaque uh, from his teeth, uh, and they extracted the data for what he would be eating. That maybe he was primarily vegetarian. Uh, that sample gave us vegetarianism. Other samples have given us, uh, in certain, for example, northern, more to the north of of, of uh, Eurasia, more uh, um, uh, carnivorous. Then you have in between. You know, it's like a, a broad. Um, of uh, of um, diets, so so I'm sure that that could be the thing, or even a regional thing, as you said. Yeah, absolutely, yes, absolutely. Uh, everything's valid. Yes, mate. <laughs> no, they weren't. <laughs> that SJW ishness came because of bloody agriculture, man. Agriculture was the the weapon that led to that to communism. So I'm going to end it now, my f mates. Uh, I might do a uh, one day this, uh, next month a uh, Q and A, and I'll post it about a month before, and I'll bloody um, spam Twitter, etc., on the Q and A to get as many questions and people to to so I can answer the questions. So, yeah, mate. See you guys. See you, John. See you, the Batman, my dear friends. And see you, everyone, and have a good night. See you, my Dwayne. I'm going away, man. I'm ending this now. So. See you guys, and we are ending the stream now.